In his first political speech since leaving the White House, former President Donald Trump is reasserting his grip on the Republican Party. Mr. Trump closed out the annual conservative meeting known as CPAC last night in Orlando. He repeated the false claim that the presidential election was stolen from him, and he offered no remorse for the assault on the Capitol by his supporters. He stopped short of announcing a 2024 run, but strongly hinted that he's not done with politics. We will take back the House. We will win the Senate, and then a Republican president will make a triumphant return to the White House. Who, who, who will that be? I wonder. Well, that former Republican president also attacked by name other Republicans who have denounced him and who voted to impeach or convict him. Republican Senator Rick Scott is a former governor of Florida. He's chairman of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, which supports GOP Senate candidates. Senator, good morning. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. Uh, as Tony just mentioned, good morning. good morning, the former president again falsely claimed that he won the election. You have said you accept the, pres you accept the presidential election results. How does the Republican Party move forward if you're still arguing about the election results? Sure. First, I want to thank Jane Jay. I think it's great that we're getting another vaccine out. And I hope everybody can get their vaccine as quickly as possible and we get back, everybody get back to school and get this economy going again. You know, I, I had the opportunity to go to CPAC last week and I put a memo out last week to Republican activists, donors, party leaders about this. This Republican civil war has been canceled. We are not going to look backwards. We are going to go forward. We, we know that there's a lot of things the Biden administration is doing that Americans, Republican, Democrat, and Independent don't believe in. We don't believe in open borders. We we don't believe in closed schools. We don't believe in men, women, women's sports. So we're going to focus on the fact. We're going to focus on the issues and going forward. We're going to have. I think we're going to have a great uh, 22. We're going to bring everybody together. Uh, the Republicans are going to take the House, the Senate, and I believe uh, the uh, former president's right. We're going to win the White House in 24. You say, Senator, the Republicans' uh, civil war has been canceled, but Vice President Mike Pence, Congressman uh, Liz Cheney were noticeably absent uh, from CPAC. The president directly attacked Republicans who voted against him in the impeachment trials in the impeachment trial. How do you have a unified party? How is the civil war canceled if that is going on in public? Well, if you, here's, here's the way the party works. Get out of Washington. The farther you get away from Washington, you know, the more united, united the Republicans are. Um, and, and what Biden, Biden is our unifier, Pelosi and Schumer. I mean, this, this idea that we're going to open our borders, we're going to not, we're going to appease uh, dictators, we're going to, you know, go back to the old way we did business with China. Um, you know, th these uh, kill in the Keystone Pipeline, that is unifying Republicans around the country. Look, what's going on in Washington is not what's going on around in the country. What's going on around the country is people say, I want my job, I want my kids back in school, I want to fund the law enforcement, I want a safe community, I want a strong military, I want a country that stands up to dictators. That's what, and that's what the Republican Party is going to do, and the Democrats are doing the opposite. Yeah, Senator, you're, you're right that Washington is a different animal than the rest of the country, but those senators and members of Congress who are calling out the president, they're representing or trying to represent what they think the viewpoint is in their states. So I want to get one more question here in on the divide that we're seeing. Mitch McConnell, uh, Senate Majority Leader, uh, until this past election, has uh, called uh, President Trump morally and practically responsible for the assault on the Capitol. Former President Trump, for his part, calls Mitch McConnell a political hack. That seems like an untenable situation for Republicans. How do you go forward? You, he, he talked to the people out out in Florida. Go around Florida. They're not talking about what 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 these party leaders are saying. What they're talking about is what's good for my family. Well, they're talking about issues. When I ran for governor, I talked about the issues. That's how I won. That's how we're going to win in 22. We're going to talk about the things that people care about: jobs, education, law enforcement. You know, that's what they care about. They, they're not they don't they're not talking about what party leaders are 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 you know they're you know anything they're saying about each other. That's why the civil war is absolutely canceled. We're Going, we're not going backwards. We're going to go forward and win in 22. To your point, Senator, uh, one of the things that people are worried about is getting some relief from the coronavirus. The Democrats uh, are pushing a COVID relief bill that you oppose. You say it's too big. Uh, isn't it just important to get relief out to people as quickly as possible? 
well, look, we, this is somebody's money. We need to do the right things. Let's let's help people that lost their job. Let's let's help the businesses that are struggling. But less than one percent of this is about the vaccine. I mean, what do we what do we start? What do you all talk about? You know, all morning is Johnson Johnson. It, well, less than one percent of this bill is about the vaccine. It's about a, a bridge for for Chuck Schumer, a tunnel for Nancy Pelosi. I mean, this is about this is about paying back liberal politicians. It's not about getting our country back to normal again. Let's focus on the vaccine. Let's focus on testing. Let's focus on helping people that lost their job. Let's focus on getting our businesses going again. That's not what this bill does. Well, so it's, it's really disappointing. And it's not part, it's very partisan. It's not a bipartisan bill. It's not, they didn't, they didn't come to the Republicans and say, let's work together. Every bill we did last year, we allocated $4.5 trillion Senator. was bipartisan. There's still a trillion dollars we haven't spent. Yeah. Senator, I, I hear that as a, as a point of political messaging. I, I think the Democrats are aware that it would appear that you guys are holding up something that, as you point out, is not all about uh, those unemployed Americans, but would help about 10 million unemployed Americans. So what do you do politically here? To What would you say to them this morning about why you're saying no when this could help them? Come talk to us. We want, we want to help people. But we're not going to go waste Americans' money. We have $27 trillion worth of debt. You see interest rates are going up. Inflation is coming back. It's caused because of government spending. So let's do the right thing for the American public. Let's help people that have lost their job. Let's help our small businesses. Let's make sure we have vaccines. Let's make sure we have testing. But wasting Americans' money when you know somebody's going to have to pay that back, you will, your kids or your grandkids, that doesn't make any money. That's not the way Washington should work. All right. Senator Rick Scott, thank you very much for being with us this morning. We appreciate it.